Um, we know macrophages are key to MTB control. Um, do all lung macrophages behave the same or are some lineages more permissive to MTB replication than others? So, um, I mean, the lung, the lung macrophage population is heterogeneous. Yes. Um, but with respect to control of tuberculosis, um, we certainly from humans we do not know whether uh, there are differences in the way you know the different subsets handle TB. But data coming out of uh, mouse models uh, do suggest that um, control of TB is related to uh, the type of macrophage um, and. Um, Aviola macrophages seem to be more permissive uh, for tuberculosis compared to recruited interstitial uh, macrophages. Um, and it does seem as though the difference is probably uh, due to the different metabolic uh, uh, pathways that the organism takes within these cells, uh, whereby in aviola macrophages, fatty acid oxidation seems to be the major source of, uh, of, uh, of energy um, uh, and glycolysis uh, is the major source of energy for the organism in uh, recruiting interstitial macrophages. Okay, so you said um, um, oxidation is the main source of energy mm -hmm. for viola macrophages. Yes. So how does that make it more permissive for MTB? So is it a better environment? I think it is. It is a better environment. So we know that. I mean, the the data at the moment uh, are not very clear on why that is a preferred uh, um, uh, source. But you recall that uh, uh, you know uh, fat use of lipids uh, as a metabolic source uh, um, has been described in, in macrobacteria, yeah. and it may be that uh, the presence of uh, fatty acids within the uh, viral macrophages uh, presents a better uh, uh, nutritional supportive environment for the organism to survive and replicate, uh, while glycolysis probably favors the activities of the cell. Uh, in uh, resident interstitial macrophages, but again, this is an area that is being uh, being looked at to try and understand what are the mechanisms uh, behind the different metabolic uh, uh, environments. Okay, uh, just for clarity, is art treatment supposed to be given for all individuals in Malawi? Is it the similar policy as yes. in South Africa? So Malawi adopted the test and treat policy. Um, I think uh, sometime last year. Uh -huh. uh, so, you know, these days a anybody who is diagnosed with HIV starts on antiretroviral therapy uh, almost immediately. Yeah. So, um, have you done studies on either on HIV positive individuals that are either art naive or people who have art in terms of understanding how the alveolar macrophages behave and do they behave differently in terms of TB co infection? So, we have. Um, uh, done previous studies uh, which have included HIV infected and retroviral naive uh, and HIV infected uh, individuals uh, at different stages of antiretroviral therapy mm -hmm. um, and the most notable things is that uh, in terms of uh, dysregulation of uh, function of these macrophages um, it's more profound in those uh, who are antiretroviral naive uh, but also um, in those who are on antiretroviral therapy for less than four years, but it tends to uh, improve, uh, you know, to, to a great extent, if you've been on, on uh, ART for more than four years. Um, now, with respect to TBHIV co-infection, we're actually doing those studies now. Um, we can still find individuals who are antiretroviral therapy naive, um, but most of the individuals we're recruiting are those who've studied antiretroviral therapy and we're recruiting them within a week of studying antiretroviral therapy um, and comparing those to um, individuals who are on ART for uh, three years or longer. Uh, so we'll be able to uh, say what they or to judge the impact of ART, um, duration of ART uh, on uh, susceptibility to, uh, to tuberculosis uh, or the permissiveness of these cells to TB or for TB, um, and whether these data will, you know, will explain what we observe um, epidemiologically, that uh, although antiretroviral therapy reduces the risk of uh, uh, developing active TB, uh, it does not eliminate that risk completely. So you know, uh, watch the space.
And so you said macrophages are more dysfunctional in individuals that are HIV positive but are naive. That's correct. So when you say in terms of dysfunction, what do you mean? They are they more pro-inflammatory? Are they less? So uh, you can look at it in different ways. Uh, so you can look at uh, um, the type of cytokines that they produce, but also their phagosomal uh, compartment in terms of uh, production of uh, reactive uh, oxygen intermediates and uh, 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 you know proteolysis so the phagosomal uh, activities we know that those are uh, impaired uh, in hiv infected individuals not on antiretroviral therapy the cytokine production uh, varies uh, but by and large uh, you have a pro-inflammatory uh, environment in the lung uh, so that would suggest that um, these individuals uh, or these cells are probably producing more cytokines than they normally are supposed to. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the pattern of cytokines, you do have both pro-inflammatory cytokines increased and the immunomodulatory cytokines. And I think what really matters is, is probably the balance between the two. Mm -hmm. So although you may have increases in both, but when you start looking at the balance, it may favor the uh, environment whereby you have inhibition of the function of these cells. And in those cases, were the macrophages themselves also infected with HIV? So, yes, so there are certain things, uh, certain dysfunctions that you find only in macrophages that are infected with uh, HIV. Mm -hmm. And that is particularly if you look at uh, phagocytosis or, for example, uh, uh, particles, these are innate particles, mm -hmm. uh, that appears to affect predominantly small viral macrophages that are HIV infected. Okay. Uh, so this is a selective dysfunction, as it were. Mm -hmm. But if you look at uh, uh, impairment of bulk proteolysis in the phagosomal compartment, that seems to be uh, across all cells, uh, both HIV-infected and un-HIV-infected cells, but within, within the same compartment. So there's a bystander effect uh, for some functions, while others are, are highly selective uh, and specific. Okay. And um, have you done any in vitro studies comparing um, the ability of MTB to replicate in macrophages that are infected with HIV and those that are not infected? And if you have, what are the main conclusions so, and results? So we haven't done that in, uh, uh, in the lab in Malawi yet, uh, but we have done that in uh, our collaborators' lab in, uh, in um, Cornell, where we've uh, uh, used uh, human-derived, uh, uh, human monocyte-derived macrophages, uh, infected them with uh, HIV for uh, seven days, uh, and then later infected them with uh, TB. Uh, and, and those assays uh, do show that uh, you do get an increase in TB replication um, uh, in the HIV infected cells. Mm -hmm. Now, the data uh, from non humid primate models uh, would suggest that, but you know, at the moment, uh, the data are quite variable. So there's no consensus that in non human primates or in mouse models you do actually see that increase in uh, TB replication in HIV-infected cells. Uh, but the uh, you know, uh, in, vi in vitro infections do suggest that. But what we plan to do is to infect uh, adviral macrophages from uh, HIV and infected individuals mm -hmm. with, um, uh, with uh, HIV and then uh, later with, with TB and see if we can get a pattern of, uh, you know, if we can get a signal mm -hmm. that mirrors uh, natural HIV infection and uh, uh, TB, ex vivo TB infection. Okay. Um, thank you very much for accepting to be interviewed by me. You're welcome. Thanks.